Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, May 26th. Welcome to our weekly team call. Um, we've got a couple really special people coming on. A uh, brand new distributor, she's gonna share her story. It's so inspiring. I know it's gonna inspire many of you. And then a very special guest trainer. So um, first of all, it's, you know, we're nearing the end of the month. We have six days left. You can do a lot in six days. Um, Tara went live in Global Legacy yesterday to give like the end of the month tips and reminders and really, you know, walking you through the process of the um, bio, the flipping the business switch and the promotion and the extra cash. So please, if you haven't watched that live, go back there and watch the live. So I'm not going to go through all of the bullet points for end of the month, but some really serious money, some really serious um, points that she made. So, um, you know, extra cash, the mentorship to make sure that you guys, as you're bringing on, you know, um, these pro threes that are rank advancing, that you're getting the mentorship uh, cash. So there's some things that you need to know and be reminded of there. And um, so a lot to do. We've got lots of um, individual launches going on this week. Our power hours have been so popular. We had 14 people on today. So please keep plugging into the power hours um, if you want us to continue them next month for sure. So without, I'm Christy Vote, by the way. <laughs> I think all of you know me. I'm coming in from Colorado. My husband Dave is sitting here with me. And I'm just gonna throw it over to our first story. Um, Shanna Long, she um, came on board just, I looked at the uh, April 29th, you guys, and then it didn't do much. I know she had some work stuff and then they went camping and then she was ready to take it serious. So Sarah Koontz, who enrolled Shanna, uh, reached out to me and she said, um, Let's, I really want to do a three-way call. These, this is such a really great couple, Shannon and Chris, and they've got a great story, and I know they can do so much with this business. Would love for you and Dave to hop on with um, me and Derek. So the six of us, the three couples, hopped on a Zoom on a Friday night. It was May 8th, and we just had such a great conversation and learned a lot about Shannon and Chris and what their goals were and really what their concerns were um, and what you know their fears were about this business. But she, um, they shifted their mindset that night and they plugged in to, you know, our getting started checklist for new distributors. And she scheduled you guys in two weeks, she scheduled four launches to where she had an average of like eight people on the first three launches. And then, um, her last launch, she had, um, one person show up, but, uh, they were amazing. It was where, you know, she shared, she and Chris shared her, their personal story to their people. And, um, they, we closed, I don't know, Shanna, like 90%. We had the customers and distributors coming um, out of that. So after two weeks, she had four distributors. You're going to have to tell me how many customers I can't keep track anymore. Um, they got to pro two yesterday. And this has been just since May 8th guys. And um, there, she's running to Pro 3. She'll very well hit it this month. And you guys, so Pro 3 with these extra bonuses, so taking Paysetter into account, and then these extra bonuses on top of that, uh, we're looking at this month, on top of the regular compensation, earning 450 extra dollars for the work that she did in these two and a half weeks, 450 extra dollars. If she maintains pro three next month, it's another $450. And then in July, um, with the pay setter, um, dollars, it's another nine, 10, 11, $300. So it's full of $1,200 in her first three months of business on top of the regular comp plan. So without further ado, <laughs> Shanna, I'm going to turn it over to you. We would love to hear your inspiring story. Thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate that. My name is Shanna Long. Um, I also live in Grand Junction, Colorado, uh, where Chrissy lives. Um, I'm married to my husband, Chris Long. We have four beautiful children, a 13-year-old boy, a 10-year-old daughter, a six-year-old daughter, and a three-year-old daughter. Um, so as you can understand, we're a very busy couple. Um, we were, were two working two-person income household, two full-time jobs. Um, 
unfortunately about my my husband's a type 1 diabetic and about six to eight months ago he was uh, diagnosed with primary uh, polylysemia uh, which is red blood cell cancer um, and then so we've been dealing and struggling with that both working full-time hours 40 hours a week for me 80 hours a week for him sports all this you know all the busy household things um, jumped to March of this year and COVID hit um, my husband in one week my husband lost his job my hours were cut um, our car was broken into my dad had a heart attack and we just really felt we were at rock bottom <laughs> uh, Sarah Coons uh, was coming into my uh, doctor's office to get a wrist looked at. I was singing my blues to her and she said, okay. And she approached me um, with Pertandem and all the benefits. Like Christy said that night, I decided to just go ahead and sign up because I didn't want to miss out, but we were leaving the next day to go camping. The very next week we did the three-way call with Christy and her husband, like she had mentioned, and they not only went into the business uh, aspect, but the health aspect and immediately, people started throwing through my, flowing through my mind. My husband, for one, the health aspect, my father just having a heart attack, um, them being horse trainers, so not only their bodies are broken, but what it could do for them and what it could do for the whole equine industry that they are so fully submerged in. Um, so we decided to do this. Uh, we started working the phone call, phone calls and the lists and the steps that Christy and Sarah had given us of sending out the video, giving the, um personal story and setting up the launch calls and yes within one week we went pro one we've just hit pro two um we've just really realized you know the sky is the limit as far as business and health wise uh chris and i were talking about this actually last the other night and um we do and are, are firm believers in that everything happens for a reason and we feel that everything had happened for this reason here um, Chris and I wouldn't have signed up, we're honest with ourselves, if he had not lost his job and all the things were tumbling. We thought that we were doing it. We thought that we were making it. Um, but this has completely opened our eyes what opportunities we could have, not only improving our health, um, but that residual income and what it can do and the pressure it's taken off of us already uh, with Chris transitioning careers. Um, it's truly brought a breath of fresh air into our family. Um, again, not only what ProTandem is doing for it, um, but also just has really lit a fire under us and getting aggressive and wanting to do better and grabbing that better dream that's out there. So thank you. Okay. That does not make you cheer up every time. So the cool thing about um, Jen and Chris is that they had no network marketing experience when we were on that three-way Zoom. I mean, you know, you had fear about network marketing, not doing it before, but you know, we asked you, Sarah and I asked you if you were open and just coachable and just follow our lead. And you said yes. And just without even overthinking it, she plugged into the system, you guys. And that's what we talk about the system. You know, Sarah just beautifully executed the system by, you know, reaching out to Shanna and getting on a three way Zoom, right? And then Shanna just, you know, scheduled her launches, started reaching out, um, asking us questions. We were in a three way chat as she was reaching out and then as soon as she had people interested she got them on a three-way with um sarah and or i and just duplicated oh and then her new distributors shanna she's already scheduled them in the, with their launches again you guys this is like literally two and a half weeks um so her distributors are lined up with launches this week and she's duplicating this system and it's just, it's executed beautifully. So thank you. Um, oh, and just one other thing. So things were rolling along beautifully, right, Shanna? And then all of a sudden, just last, um, during, uh, just before your fourth launch, you had this horrible text that we, we all are gonna get eventually. And I'm just so glad you just got it over with, the first one. But this text from a friend, so-called friend, just <laughs> bashing. MLMs and what you were doing and don't listen to them. They're full of lies. That's <laughs> crazy. So good for you for just moving forward with that. Thank you. 
Yeah. Thank you. Because <laughs> that, like, that hurt me. Um, so thank you, Shannon, for sharing. And I know you inspired a lot of people. And please, you guys, if you haven't launched or relaunched, whatever you want to call it, just the more intimate um, overviews that you can do for your people, instead of plugging into these larger overviews, um, so much better, so much more measurable. Um, okay, so without further ado, I'm going to um, introduce our special guest. So this guy, you know, when Dave and I saw him like on stage for the first time, we're just like, wow, he is awesome. Like just mesmerizing. And he just has so much passion. And then um, I actually got to meet him personally with Angie um, when we went to Ireland. The, the day we arrived, Fred and all of his, um, some of his team and his friends were already there. And so we got to hang out with them um, the first day in Ireland. And he's just such a down to earth, um, just kind of shoot from the hip, say it like it is, um, not intimidating at all. Um, when you see him on stage, I, I thought he was gonna be intimidating. But anyway, Angie and I were just talking last Friday and we're like, who could we bring on to train? Because I think our team is probably a little bit tired of hearing from us and Tara. You know, who like, could bring on in something so different and unique to our team? And I'm like, Fred, and she's like, yes, Fred. So we immediately reached out to him on Friday. He's on the boat, you know, with his family. And he's like, sure, absolutely, I would love to. So um, Fred Graves, he's been, he's an elite pro nine, been in the company, I think nine years. He's, he has an amazing story. He's married to beautiful Casey Graves. They have three kids, right, Fred? And I'm going to hand it over to him now and let him share his story and do what he does best. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to spend time with you guys tonight. And um, I love hearing Shannon's story. Honestly, that, that's what drives me. You know, we, we, we all are here to create success, but when you can allow the, uh, the ability to help people create a life that they never thought was possible, it gives you this feeling of success and fulfillment that it's not even possible in traditional business. So, uh, and I see Dave, what's up Dave? You'd be proud. I, I wake surf behind a 43 foot fishing yacht uh, two days ago. It was pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty crazy to surf on that big old boat. But um, yeah, guys, we're fired up. I've, I've actually been involved with the company November of 2009 is when I found out about it. And I'll share a little bit of my, my, my story, not to bore you, but I always like people to know where successful leaders are coming from, simply because, you know, in life, we're always trying to size up, will this work for me? Is it real, right? I'm, here's one thing I've realized in my life at the 39 years is everyone in the world, I don't give a crap how successful you are or not successful you are, everyone would take more money. I don't care what they would say, they would take more money, okay? And no matter how good or bad your health is, you would take better health. And no matter how much time freedom you would have, you would take more time. There's no one in the world that would say no to it. And there's not many opportunities that can offer all of those things like Life Vantage. So, you know, I grew up in Tampa, Florida. My dad was in construction. I loved running heavy equipment. I knew I was going to, you know, subcontract for FEMA doing disaster relief work. I had life figured out. My father was killed when I was 14 years of age. And, you know, it's one of those punches to the gut in life. You got to either, you know, soak in it and can't do nothing about it. Or you got to man up and figure things out. And that's what I did. So I just kind of focused on success. And, you know, I thought I knew what I was going to do in life working with him. And when all that changed, I was like, okay, well, now it's up to me. So at 16 years of age, I knew what I was going to do in life. All my friends, we were talking about, you know, what college we were going to go to and what sports we we're going to play. And I'm like, man, I'm just ready to get life started. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm watching people go to college, very small percentage of people, you know, make it to the NFL or in the big leagues. Um, and then these people go to college and they're getting out at 26, almost 30 years of age, starting life. And I don't want to do that. I want to start now. And so uh, I didn't think it made much sense for a professor to teach me how to run a business if he's not running a business. So I took the theory in life, listen, we're all equal. All humans are equal. The only thing that separates us in life are the choices that we make, and that's it. And so I dropped out of school at 16, and I surrounded myself with successful people. I watched the people that had the bonding job, the contracts, and all the, the main general contractors that I was working for, and I just followed them. I did what they did, and every year, my business grew. By the time I was 24, I made my first million. And I was working six to seven months a year. I'd go 
clean up a natural disaster. If you see on the Weather Channel a natural disaster and everybody's evacuating, we're the only morons heading to the town because that's, that's what we did. We got pe people's life back going. It was, it was a rewarding business. It was a rush, but it was business, man. I mean, we worked seven days a week, 16 hours a day while that we had work, six, seven months, and then we just waited for the next storm. We were the only sickos that watched the Weather Channel waiting for the next storm to hit, right? Um, I diversified. I, I bought a gypsum mine over in Dominican Republic. I moved to Dominican Republic. I had a 10-year plan to have a, a billion-dollar drywall plant and started mining gypsum. And I invested every dollar I had. And it, it cracks me up when people talk about life advantage being risky. 600 bucks and you're getting product. What the heck? I invested my whole life, like every red cent, and had investors back me up. I lived there for a year. And everything was going great on our end. Something that was completely out of my control, the economy, the economy crashed. You guys remember in 08, 09, took a massive dip. Well, my investors owned a construction company out of New Orleans, Louisiana. And so when the economy hit, they're like, hey, we've got to pull out. We can't wire the $30,000 a month for operations anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, give me a plane ticket home because I've got nothing. So literally, I came back to the U.S. in August of 09. Uh, with a suitcase full of clothes, no car, no house, started life over. And so here's what I did different and why Life Vantage was a no-brainer to me is I always thought I was a hard worker and I always thought I'd be, I was willing to do whatever it took to make something create success. That didn't get me very far because something that was in, out of my control literally ripped the rug from under me. And so I said, I got to work smarter. And so I realized that we lived in a world that technology was taking over. I knew nothing about computers. I knew nothing about the tech world, but I saw technology changing everything around me. I saw it changing the way we communicate, the way that we shop, everything. And I, and I saw that technology was doing away with people's jobs. So when LifeVantage came to me, I didn't see this as an ability for me to make a little bit extra money. This to me was the Facebook opportunity. I know for a fact, every single one of you would have invested in Facebook knowing what you know now. There's no person in the world that would say no. I mean, you would have sold your kids, your house, your cars. You could have bought them all back. It would have been a smart investment, but you would have knowing what you know now, right? And so for me, Bill Gates didn't call me. Facebook didn't call me. Amazon didn't call me. But a publicly traded company that had patents on the biggest discovery in medicine is giving me a chance to go participate. And there's no boundaries in the compensation plan. And there's no boundaries of how big of an area I can go build. It's all me. So I still get to be my own boss. I get to work for myself. But I don't have to deal with the workman's comp and the general liability and the employees and the liability. And if you guys have ever owned your own business, you realize you go to bed thinking about your employees and what they're going to screw up. And you wake up wondering what happened while you were sleeping. And for me... We had 70,000 pound machines and tracos and dozers. And I mean, people die, right? If, if there's a mistake made. So it was this stress that I had. Yes, I was making money from what people would say is success, but the stress was there. And so with this, it was a no brainer. I went to my brother-in-law's house, Brendan Cunningham. He showed me the video and I watched the video and I go, dude, I don't know. I can't spell half the crap I just listened to. What does this have to do with me? And he goes, here's the deal. It's the solution the medical world's looking for. We have patents and the company's publicly traded. And I go, who knows about it? And he's like, you got this goofy little smirk. He's like, me. And I'm like, wait, you're telling me you're the only dude who knows about us, the biggest solution in medicine? He's like, pretty much, we're just starting out. And I'm like, sign me up. And I'm not kidding you guys. I enrolled that night after 30 minutes of talking to him. I left myself with the, I'm literally, after I enrolled with the platinum pack, I had 200 bucks left to my name. I called my girlfriend at the time and I was like, hey, get all our money together. And she started laughing because we were broke. She's like, what money? I'm like, I'm not kidding. Get our money together. We're doing this. And she started crying and she's like, if we do this, we're going to have 200 bucks to our name. I'm like, if we don't, we're going to stay broke and that's not okay. Here's our way out. And so we just started grinding. And what's funny, you talk about your subscription. So think about this. Our rent's due because I was renting a bed from a buddy of mine for 300 bucks. It was due next week. And she's like, we've got 200 bucks left to our name. And I just got an email talking about auto ship. What is auto ship stuff? I'm like, I don't know. I guess I just got to go work harder, right? So the same things that every one of you guys go through, the same, the same 
like scare of, oh my gosh, what are my friends going to think? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to do one of these things. I had my friends tell me I was stupid and crazy. I can't believe you're selling pills. I thought you were a successful business person. Those same guys have to go to work tomorrow and I don't. Okay. So who was the fool? So the bottom line is every single one of you guys have made the choice of change. When you look at society and our economy, 75% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck and it's not even their freaking fault, man. They went to school, they got the good grades, they went and got their degree, but you've got to be smart enough to learn how to bob and weave in life. Life is just a game. You got to figure out how to play it. So people are going through life, they're getting their jobs and you have things like COVID, you have things like technology, you have these little things that are doing away with people's jobs every single day. And people are justifying that where they're at is where they were meant to be. You heard Shanna. If life wouldn't have hit her, her and her family would have kept going on that road because that's just what they thought they were supposed to do, right? And so life happens. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. What the heck? I was there, right? Poor, poor, pitiful friend. I've lost everything. I'm such a loser. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. I look back and I go, what if, what if the economy didn't crash in a way? What if my plan worked out and I had a gypsum mind? I'd be living in a third world country still. Yes, I have money to do what with? To go to work in a nice car? Who gives a crap about that, right? Now in, that, in my vantage, I, for the last eight years, I've never made less than $40,000 a month. My wife's a pro eight. I'm a pro nine. I, I talk about our, our matching. We were dating when we got involved. And I tell people, if you understand our matching bonus, you understand why I married her. Because I got, I, now I get to double dip on all of the business. And what's funny is when our checks started to get about 20, 30,000 a month, I went and formed corporations. So my pro nine position is upgraded life. And my wife's pro eight position is double dipping incorporated, right? Just say what it is. It is what it is. I'm double dipping the comp plan. Why not? If you can, go do it. But at the end of the day, guys, every single one of you, has said yes for a reason. You're here because you wanted better health. You're here because you wanted a chance at wealth. You wanted more time with your family. When you think about life, what do we do? We go to school, we go to college, we get a job, we start dating, we get married, we have kids. Like what in the heck are we getting married and having kids for? As a husband, I used to think my job was just to provide. No, I wanted to be in their life. What job allows you to be in their life outside of this? So remember this stuff when you're going through the nose. And I'll tell you this, when I came back and I was broke, the same friends that said I was crazy and stupid, they didn't pay my bills. They didn't come and give me a car. They didn't buy my food. So why would I care what they thought about an opportunity that had a light at the end of the tunnel for me? And the reason I'm sharing this story with you guys is you are going to be in that same situation. You're going to have family members turn your back on you. You're going to have friends turn your back on you. And what you're going to realize is this is your fight. This is your fight. What are we really doing at Life Banners? Let's, let's sit back and look at what we're doing. We're doing human behavior. It's natural for us to share things with the people we love when we like it. If you go to a good steakhouse, you tell your friends, oh my gosh. If you guys ever go to Tampa, Florida, go to Charlie's Steakhouse. It's the number four steakhouse in the country. Go to the bar and ask for Gary and get a martini. They're the sickest martinis you've ever had in your life. They don't skip. They fill it to the rim. You get your money's worth, and the steak will blow your mind. They don't pay me to say that. Did I, do I care if you go, oh, I don't eat meat? <laughs> Sucks for you. I don't care. I'm still going to go to Charlie's Steakhouse. I'm still going to tell my friends about eating steak at Charlie's Steakhouse, when you lay your song, you share, oh my gosh, have you heard that new song? If you see a movie, oh my gosh, you say those things not expecting anything out of it, right? It's natural behavior. What are we doing at Life Vantage? We found out about the most powerful product in the world, not only for your health, but we have an opportunity for people, not just to be a daddy that provides, but to be a daddy that's in their kids and their wife's life. We have the opportunity for someone not to allow money to control them. Do you guys know why people hate talking about money? 
I can tell you in two seconds, if a person doesn't like talking about money, they're in a situation that money's controlling them. If you have to worry about how much your balance in your checking account is before you pay a bill, I wouldn't want to talk about money either. So when you're out talking to your prospects, you have to be you. You have to be natural. Don't look at your Rolodex as a prospect and dollar signs. Look at it as a friend that you know if Dave saw this vision, the dude could wake up and go on his boat every freaking day. He wouldn't have to wake up and worry about a job. That's what I see when I see Dave, right? When I see Angie, I want to see Angie wake up and cook her kids breakfast, take them to school, and be freaking home when they get home from school. That's what I see when I see Angie. And I'm going to share this information the same way I'm going to share to go to Charlie's Steakhouse. You have to, you have to completely remove the emotions of what people think about this business. Because at the end of the day, your friends and family are not going to give you the life that you deserve. They're not going to give you more time with your family and they're not going to pay your freaking bills. Okay. So do not become emotionally attached to what they think about what you're doing. At the end of the day, when people go, how did you have so much success so fast? I hit never to network marketing. And you got to remember and the company opened in May of 09. We got started November of 09. My brother-in-law, Brand Lennon, they never done network marketing. Our uplines never done network marketing. Their uplines never did marketing. There was someone way up there that did it before, right? We didn't know them. They were out west. We just were coachable. We followed what they did. We followed the system. But at the end of the day, the reason why we had success came down to our confidence and posture in this. When we had conversations with people, I did not care what you thought about it. And it was, I'm not a jerk. But unless you're going to pay my bills, why would I care what you think? I did not call you to join me. I was calling you to let you know I'm going with or without you. And when you know where you're going in life, what happens is you speak with passion. You speak with, with, with confidence. And what happens is no one ever in life wants to be first. You know that, right? No one wants to be first. But you know what they hate even worse? To be left behind. So, so when you're giving them this information, don't ask what they think about it. Who gives a crap? What, the, your friend, you're gonna, what do you think about the video? No, who gives a crap? They're not going to say anything that's going to change what American Heart Association just said, right? Do, do you guys have any family or friends that are smarter than the, the Institute of Aging? If not, then who cares, okay? It's more like this. One of the, the cone tokens I've always said to someone is, Angie, listen, some came in my life that made me think of you. I don't know if this is for you or not, but you have to know what I'm doing. That one sentence has so much psychology in it because I just gave you a way out. Angie, I don't know if this is for you or not. But then I also added confidence saying, Angie, you need to know what I'm doing. So when's a good time to talk? All our job is to do, your job as a distributor, your job is to create curiosity, set the appointment up, and feed a funnel. That's it. That's all our job is to do. You like steak, go to Tampa, Charlie's Steakhouse, go to the bar and order a martini from Gary. That's it. If you do it, it's on you. I don't care. I'm going and I'm going to have plenty, okay? So at the end of the day, I don't know if this is for you or not. You need to know what I'm doing. When's a good time to talk? And then I set up a three-way call. However your team does it, whether it's, it's, it's always ITT, whether it's to straight to a three-way call, whether it's straight to a video, whatever. Whatever your team does, your job is to set up the appointment and that's it they don't know if it's network marketing they don't know if they don't know anything they don't know what it is you know why you don't want to give them anything because then they start asking you and then what you will do not because you're meaning to you will start selling them and as soon as you start selling them they're out the door a wall goes up conversations done you just lost out not every time but you've just completely diminished the odds and the number game okay at the end of the day, you're setting an appointment. If, if, the, if, if I set that appointment up and they go, okay, well, what, what is it? <laughs> Angie, listen, it's a big freaking deal. I can't even sleep at night. Every time I hear about it, I get more fired up. I don't want to screw it up. It's that big of a deal. You just tell me a time so we can talk. Is 3 o'clock good for you? I'm open. But I'm telling you right now, my time slots are filling up. Is 3 o'clock good? All right, I'll call you back at 3. That's it. Done. And then when I get on that three-way call or that video, all I'm doing is, hey, Angie, listen, I told you, I don't want to screw this up. I told you, I don't know if this is for you, but you need to know why I'm so fired up. This is my really good friend. They don't know ranks, okay? So you don't have to say rank. 
You don't, I don't, you don't have to say Christy's ring. Christy's my friend, okay? Christy's my friend, and Christy has achieved so much in life, and Christy is helping me achieve some goals that I have. That's how you edify someone that doesn't know anything about network marketing, okay? Because as soon as you go, my upline, my leader, my rank, it's like, what the hell? I thought you were just my friend telling me some information. You've got to be normal. Don't be weird. If you think you're being weird, you're being weird, okay? If you think you're selling your friends, you're selling your friends. It is what it is. It's just, you, you just got to be so jacked up because you have the ability to go create the life that you can't imagine. Guys, I've got 43, no, I'm sorry. My mind's went blank. 54,000, 54,000 customers on these products. And when I said yes to this opportunity, I'm 100% honest with you. I didn't know what this product was. I'm going to be really honest with you. I didn't start taking the pill till I was already Pro 2, knocking on Pro 3. My product had sat in the kitchen for three weeks. And Casey's like, man, if we're going to really do this and these boxes are going to keep coming, we might as well start taking the stuff. I'm like, yeah, I guess so, right? I mean, it, publicly traded, patents, what else do you need to know, right? Because at the end of the day, listen, I understand this product helps people in health. But you know how people are stressed out, sick to their gut because they're worried about their car getting repoed right now? Do you know how many people are freaking out around the world because of COVID-19? They're stressed out. Do you know how many people that own businesses can't even go back to work because employees are making more money sitting on their butt on freaking this stupid checks that they're sending out to everybody? They don't even want to go back to work. People need what we have. People need it. And what you have to understand is you have to know your audience. And the reason why you don't want to become emotionally attached to what they think, majority, majority of the people you will talk to, they do not understand opportunity. They are looking for security. I want you to know the difference. There are people right now Googling jobs. I've never looked for a job in my life. If you are looking for a job, your end result is you're going to be at a job. I've always looked at a way for me to create income and find a way out, dog. I want a business to flip it and to sell it. I'm going to do, it no matter what you're doing, if you're making money, hey, what are you doing to make money? I want to know. That's just how I'm, I'm always been in my whole life. But think about it. Majority of your friends, they're stressed out about money thinking, I need a job. So if you're going to them about an opportunity, they may not see it. Probably won't, right? And so again, the reason why it's so important that you set that funnel up and feed that funnel up in a natural behavior that we've been doing our whole life is because when people get this information, half of their brain is going, oh my God, publicly traded, patents, oxidation, all that. They're, they're excited about all the information, but people don't sign up because they don't believe in their self. That's it. They have self-doubt. And again, it's not their freaking fault, man. If they have, if they went to school and went to college and got a job, they've never been able to make their decisions ever in their whole life. It's not their fault. Okay. So don't be frustrated with them. Be patient, be patient and get this information as many people as possible. And I'm going to tell you what, you have to divorce your results and marry the process because every single person that tells you no, they're saying no to their self, but I promise you they're watching you. They're watching you. And they're wondering if it's going to work. And man, and I'm going to tell you what, the, here's the best follow-up you could ever follow up to anybody. Every single one of you guys have talked to a friend a couple times. And in your head, you're like, how do I bring it up again? When, when's the best time to follow up? They've done the three-way call. They know the information. They haven't told me no. They're just kind of lingering. The best follow-up is to not say a word about life advantage or protanum. And you call them and you just ask about their kids and ask about their family and ask about sports and ask about life and let them remember that you've never changed them from being a friend to a dollar sign. And guess what's going to happen when you're excited and you're fired up and you're asking them about their kids and Kristen, how's it going? I see your Facebook life's going great. That's awesome. How's it? She's going, what's he doing? Why is he so happy? Because they're used to everybody else in the world, especially if you turn the freaking TV on. Everybody's negative. Everybody's full of crap. So if I'm happy, I'm just talking about life, concern, she's wondering. I don't have to say a word. And you know what's going to happen? More than likely, she's going to go, hey, 
How's that thing working out for you? And I'm going to go, what thing? Oh, you mean like Vanish? I told, holy crap. Woo! That's It's insane. But you know what? I'm so freaking excited that they're going to play the NFL this year. And I'm going to switch it again. I'm going to take it away. It eats them alive. It eats them alive. It's like, no, no. They're supposed to sell me right now, and I don't want them to, right? So don't give them what they're expecting. At the end of the day, guys, there's nothing you're going to say to make a person do this business. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're good, if you're really good, and you're good at getting people in the business, and they're getting in the business because you're good, they're not going to do anything. They're going to hinder your business. They're going to slow your business up. They're going to get in your way. The people that you want on your team have made that emotional connection to what if? What if this is possible? That burning desire of change is what you want to go work with. Don't worry about a, just another distributor to enroll. You worry about people that are hungry that want this, and you will have an enjoyable journey at Life Vantage. And the reason why I say that is because I got a lot of people in. I burnt really relationships because I thought everyone thought like me. I thought everybody was waking up every day looking for opportunity. And I realized that majority of them didn't even know what opportunity looked like, okay? So again, you have to continue to give them the information, help them understand that the only boundaries in life are the ones that we individually put there. That's it, man. There is nothing that separates you from any successful person in this world. They were just willing to go a little bit further. They were willing to risk a little bit more. It's so funny. We start talking about this, this business about three years in. My phone started blowing up. I, we, I got two free Jeeps the company gave me. Maybe it was over those posts. It was something going on. And my friends started calling me. They're like, okay, man, I'm in. I'm in. I'm like, what? What are you talking? You're in what? You're like, in mud? You're stuck? What, what are you in? And like, no, man, put me in. I'm ready to do this with you. And I'm like, okay, cool. Why? And they're like, well, dude, I, I, I mean, I've seen you sleeping on Todd Harris's couch. You, you bought it, driving around a $1,200 purple minivan so you could work out of it. And now you're freaking traveling the world, living it up. I want that. I'm like, cool, let's do it. Here's what we're going to do. And they're like, whoa, I don't know if I'm willing to do that. I'm like, well, whoa, maybe this life isn't what you deserve. You've got to fight for what you want. It's so funny because people go, you know, they hear my story. I enrolled the Belangers in Louisiana. They lived in Louisiana. I live in Tampa. It's a 10-hour drive. Me and Casey drove there every month for two years. Every single month for two years, we drove that. And guess what? The first four to five months, I couldn't afford a hotel room. And we would make a pallet and sleep in the back of the car. And I was sharing that one day, and Sonny got so mad. He's like, I would have paid for your hotel. I'm like, dude, you didn't get me in this hole. I got to dig myself out of it. But you know what's crazy about it? It's people are like, oh, my gosh. I just don't know if I'd be willing to do that. Do you know that never one time? I felt like it was, it was a struggle. Not one time did I look at Casey and go, I can't believe we've got to sleep in the back of a car. We were so fired up about having the opportunity to go build this business, to go create a life and never look back. Are you kidding me? I'd go sleep in the car right now. I mean, think about that. There's got AC. I took a blanket. It wasn't like I was on the freaking dirt outside, hot and sweating. I mean, what are you willing to do to go create a life that you can't even imagine? And that's what you guys have to understand, man. You've got to be hungry. And I'll tell you this, the hurdles that you will go through in this business, the fears that you have, it's all fake. Those fears are holding you back from where you truly want to be. And let me take it one step further. Stop being selfish with your fear. Because your fear that's holding you back from your business, think about the thousands of families that are starving and crying and desperate for this product and this opportunity. Don't let your fear not only steal what your life should be, but an opportunity for them. Because I could have quit a long time ago. I could have quit. There was some stuff that went down. This business isn't easy, but is life easy? Think about it. Is life easy? No. But you got to figure out how you want to go through it. But at the end of the day, at least you know when you lay your head on that pillow, what you're fighting for is changing people's lives forever. Their lives will change forever. My business, me facing my fear, there's people alive today. There's people out of wheelchairs today. There's people that daddies didn't see their kids 
because they were waking up before the kids woke up. Dads were coming home after the kids were sleeping because I faced my fear they had a shot. Now, I'm not saying their success was because of me, but I'm saying if I would have not continued my business, this opportunity would have never fell in their lap. You get that? So guys, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm 39 years old. I get to raise my kids. Life's amazing. But the most rewarding thing in life is that you get to see other people create a life that they could never even imagine, ever imagine. The tears and the texts that you get, thank you for this and thank you for that. I, I've had, I mean, I'll do this for the rest of my life. I angel invest in a lot of businesses. I love the challenge of business. I've got my hands a little bit of everything. But I'll tell you this, I'll do these calls and I'll do these Zooms and I'll travel teaching people for the rest of my life because it's not driven by money. <laughs> yes, I want to be pro 10, but my hunger is not just because I want a bigger check, right? What drives me is the fact that there's people out there needing conversations like this. And if just one of you on this Zoom take anything I said away from tonight and it helps you build your business, I did my job. And that's what life's about. And think about, think, think about how cool it is that these are the type of people that you get to surround yourself with. I want my kids around you. I want my kids that are willing to go fight for more time with their family. That's what I want my kids around. My kids, I, I homeschool my kids. I, we found a, 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 I take them to school. I don't homeschool them suckers. It's a homeschool school, right? But I still have the ability to take them wherever, but I still want them to deal with the daily struggles of people I want them to be able to communicate with people, but college, I mean, I guess if they want to, but I bring them to elite academies and I bring them on all my trips because I want them surrounded with people that dream big. I want them to be around people that don't look through blinders, right? I can see all the way around. I want you them to see all the way around. So I don't know what you want to talk about. I could talk all night. I mean, it's life and just changed my life. It's, it's surreal. It's, it's kind of funny when, you're, when your business starts to really take off. We hit Pro 9 in 28 months, and the checks were climbing fast. And when your check starts going up in five and 6,000 increments, you're, no lie, Casey would come to me, and she's like, hey, we just got paid. And I'm like, well, why are you freaked out? Well, you should be happy. Did you see the check? And she's like, yeah, but, but, but we're not doing anything illegal, right? Like, we're not going to go to jail? I'm like, no, this is real life. This is real business. But it is. It's crazy, man. You guys, you guys are in the driver's seat. You guys got phenomenal leadership. So, you know, stay hungry. Focus on the, the end result. You will never find an end result that, that will fit your need in, in traditional business. This is it. And you found it. I applaud every single one of you. I don't care. The, the person that's a distributor on here that hasn't signed up one customer or one distributor I applaud you because you've already done what 75% of Americans aren't willing to do. They rather justify their life and sit in their little soak in their little hole. And at least you fought and took that risk to get involved. You keep that vision and you will succeed. I promise you. Chris, I don't know if you guys have anything. Or Fred, oh my God. Do I say mesmerizing or what? I could listen to you all night long. And I could just tell by the faces and the comments, people are just fired up. And I think the one thing that I would love for you to address before you hop off, I mean, you obviously wrapped the business around the product. And I really Absolutely. feel that so much of us, this team, are so focused on our product story, because the product's amazing, but you're wrapping this business around the product. How do we help switch that? It's all about it, because here's the, here's the thing. It comes down to at the beginning, it's that fear of what people think, right? And so we hide behind this. We hide behind this because no one can say anything bad about it. You can't disprove this. Now let's talk MLM. Shoot, man, we can, we can bash MLM all day. And they're right. They are freaking right. Don't defend your friend when they start bashing MLM. You need to agree with them because there's right. But you know what? There's also good doctors and bad doctors. You see the four cops in Minneapolis? There's bad cops, there's good cops. So there's bad MLM, I agree. So this is just a comfort zone for people. So they hide behind it. But what you have to realize, if you stand behind what we have, there is nothing to be ashamed of. We're doing it right. We're doing it right. We're a publicly traded company. We're not grease in the books. Everything's transparent. We've got signs behind every single product we have. This isn't a me too product. 
Do you guys realize, I, I want you guys to understand this, okay? Because I don't think people understand this. This is not a product some people might take. This is not a product some people might have some results. Do you realize how rare it is to have an opportunity to go to bring something to market, to be the first to market with a brand? Do you realize for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life, when you cut yourself, you will ask for a Band-Aid. I don't care how much money Bezo has, he can't come out with a medical adhesive strip and change the fact that you and I will always call that thing a Band-Aid because that brand was what brought that to market. And for the rest of your life, when you blow your nose, you will ask for a Kleenex. That's an opportunity. It, this is, it's a whole nother level because in business, what business is really about is positioning yourself in front of the masses. That's winning in business. But to take it to a whole nother level and to realize that this literally could eliminate the need for supplementation, we don't supplement the body, we activate the body. And again, here's what helps me know this. No one in their right mind, knowing what they know about Facebook, Amazon, any of those massive companies, no one wouldn't have invested if they knew what they knew now. And if you agree with that, that show you the value that people put on money. People may not want to talk about it. They may be embarrassed about it. But that's why if you are so fired up, jacked up about it, they will believe you off of your emotions. It's not what you say. You, you hear this all the time. Facts don't sell. Stories do. Why? Why did, why did I forget her name, I'm so sorry, that, that opened up. Why did her story get everybody right here in your throat, right? Because it's real life. This is, these are real people. There's a real mom with Shannon, I see there. With kids, you see her little girl in the background, right? That's what we're fighting for. We're giving people hope, right? So you have to be fired up about the business. It, it's, you, you've got you've to make it all together. Because here's, here's what it is. The only reason we've got the biggest opportunity of a lifetime is our product. It really is. You can, and you can make money in any MLM, in any product, if you look at passionate about it. I'm not doing it. You can. But the reason why this opportunity is so big is because this product, it's, it's a new to market. It's a brand. It's changing things. Do you feel the timing is different now than it was when you first started? Like even better? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's 10 times better. Because I can tell you what, 10 years ago, we didn't have a system, right? We didn't have leaders with experience like Tara and Rachel to come and go, hey, this is what we're doing. What are you doing, right? Hey, tell us what you did to hold this company together when you see companies flopping all over. We did something right to hold it together. So what'd you do right? Okay, wait a minute. But you crushed numbers while you guys were at this company. What'd you do? So you collaborate. So you've got more wisdom from a leadership standpoint. You've got more proof in the pudding. We had three studies. We've got 28. We had our first two CEOs that had never done network marketing. I don't think any of you guys want to go on a cruise ship that guy that's never captained a ship before, right? Well, that was our first two CEOs. They were good people, but they made some stupid decisions because they were trying to run a traditional business in network marketing. You can't do that. So I'm telling you right now, we're, where we're at today, it's a tipping point. The proof is there. The writing is on the wall. There is no, I wonder if this will work. I couldn't put anybody on the phone 10 years ago that was making over 20 grand a month. Now, you know the income disclosure. How much money gets you excited, right? So the point of it is, we've went through consistently, and here's what I'll tell you from an MLM standpoint. The reason why people get a bad taste of mouth about MLM is because most companies have to build off of hype or sex appeal, right? Hype, sex appeal, or trends. That's what network marketers trend on, right? What are the hot new companies? Oh, it's CBD, right? Everybody is trendy right now. 10 years ago, it was antioxidants. Oh, so they hop on the trend and they try to capture it. It's smart business. We're not doing any of that crap. We ain't catching no freaking trend. We're creating the trends. We're making the path. Can't compete with that. And because of it, I don't have to convince or sell you. It's real talk. There's nothing to compare to anything that I have. So the point of it is we're building different. And when you see companies that explode, right, when they're exploding off of hyper trends, guess what runs out? 
sex appeal, trends, they all run out. Hype, it runs out. And then you see those same companies go, boom. And then you get a bad taste about that MLM because their friends ran around and told everybody, I got a free car. And now they got a car in the driveway they can't afford because the trend's gone, right? So when you look at building a sustainable, unique product, and that's what pro that Life Advantage is, we have the unique product that MLM is missing. We've got it, okay? That unique product, the growth that we have sustains. So where a lot of people go, oh, you guys have been hovering around 200 million for seven years. I'm like, and that's why you should look at us because that shows you we've got a solid foundation. Because I'm not telling you, I don't want to redo this. I don't want to rebuild. I don't want to have to go start and build teams and relationships. No, no, no. It's called security. I like security with business to know my wealth ain't going anywhere. And that's why 54,000 of my, my team members are customers. And I've got 4,000 distributors. Because I want that sustainability. I want that foundation. And so if you want me to paint a picture for you, if you guys have ever driven by a house, and they're building a house, right? And you're driving by like, oh, look, Susie and Sam building a house. And you see some trees come down. And then you see the dirt show up. And then you see stuff going on, but you can't physically see it because it's all underground, right? You didn't see them pull the permits. You didn't see the, the inspectors come. You just see busy work going on. And then the foundation's poured. And then the walls go up. You're like, holy cow, that house went up overnight. No. It took time, right? What you didn't see is all the prep work until the foundation's there. All Life Advantage has achieved right now is the foundation. We haven't even got started yet. If you could go do a billion dollars a month selling detergent and soap, come on. And we're only doing a quarter of a billion with the most powerful product in the world. You know where we're going. It is what it is. So again, it's why you have to put, don't be distracted on anybody else. No one has what we have. I can care less what the fastest growing company in MLM is. I can care less. I can care less how big that dude's check is over at that company. Because I'm telling you right now, they don't have what we have. And 20 years from now, they'll be in our organization. Just watch it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All right, Fred. I can't even thank you enough. I know everybody here is with Anytime. me. Anytime. Thank you so much. This was amazing. It's recorded. So we're going to listen to it over and over again and get yep. jumped up. and. Um, I hope you'll come back. <laughs> Anytime. Thank Fred, you. Thank, Fred, thank you so much. Like our, our chat group's just on fire right now. People are really excited, so thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was huge. I think everyone on my team that's listening has text messaged me about it. <laughs> good, I'm good. Like ready to dive back in again. Or, well, you know. listen, not because I just did this meeting, but the last meeting you just had is the best meeting always, right? Yeah. And so go build your business with that excitement. If you're fired up right now, get off the Zoom and go freaking call some people. You don't have to tell them what I said. It's your emotions. It's your level of excitement. People just want to be happy. That's it. That's exactly right. You guys, take the feeling inside your heart right now and go get into action. Don't, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Take the feeling and go do something with it. Yep. Thank you, Fred. All right, guys. We'll see you guys in October. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.